Good afternoon, OTP channel. My name is AZ Axel. I am the OTP tech support, and I am very happy to be here this uh, afternoon with all of you guys. I know I could do a brilliant intro, but, you know, I don't even actually know of any music that I could technically play that would not be copyright infringement. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with the usual intro of me just talking, because that's probably going to be just about as good. So... Welcome, everybody, to another Science Saturday with Alex. Um, I am, of course, Alex, and we'll be doing some more stuff today. And, of course, as we always do on Science Saturdays, this is going to be very, very impromptu, very, very sporadic and a little scattered. But we're going to learn some stuff about the game. We're going to learn some stuff about OTP21, what it can do, what it can't do, what breaks it, and what we can learn about the game and be able to utilize in our games down the road. So hopefully everyone's having a good time today so far on this nice, beautiful Saturday. It's been really, really nice uh, in Arizona here. I live in Phoenix, so uh, to the other person from Arizona in the chat, hello. I hope to see you soon once we're out of quarantine. Um, this is going to be an interesting episode today. I have gotten approached by an actual user from our Discord that's actually in the chat right now, bat righty, throw lefty, which is Tommy Edmond in our Discord. He had approached me about feeder leagues and how you exactly set one up and what he would need to do to make his game use a feeder league. And I had been thinking about doing a feeder league stream for a while now, actually. So this was like near the top of my list of stuff to accomplish live on stream. So we're going to demonstrate and set up a custom feeder league live on the channel as quickly as possible because these can get a little complicated if you don't know what you're doing. So we're going to kind of show you guys the ins and outs of how to do feeder leagues, what that entails, and everything that is basically feeder leagues and what you need to know about them. Oh, <laughs> what you look at? <laughs> oh, I, uh, that wasn't even my doing. That was Rich's. So, yeah, if you guys don't know, we actually have notifications now on the uh, on the game about uh, streams and all that kind of stuff. So, cool. Cool. Um, I don't know if it'll get, I don't know if this will get posted to YouTube. I may push Rich to put this to YouTube just because this could actually be more of a tutorial um, than anything else. So, Yes, I'm pretty sure this will get posted to YouTube. So if you guys have to leave before we get all this finished and you don't get to see it all, yes, I'll try to ensure that this gets posted someplace else. Um, oh, hold on. I don't need followers on my screen. Why is... Why are followers on my screen? No, and... There we go. You guys don't need to know who's following me personally. Let's get rid of those. So... <clears throat> Now that we've gotten the uh, the professionalness of the stream back to status quo, outside of the fact that the game's not in full screen mode, which we know what happened last time um, in full screen mode, what happened last time. So we're not doing that again. Um, I don't know about the past broadcasts. They may already be out of contention for being uh, put up onto YouTube. To be honest, the last couple of streams were more so us just kind of demonstrating what you uh, can learn about, like position players and different stats and different ratings. So they're not as vital um, as, say, explaining how to make a feeder league. So it will be in our past broadcast. You can go back and watch one and two, but only for a short period of time before it's removed from Twitch. Uh, but yes, technically episodes one and two are live on Twitch right now. Uh, you can go back and watch those if you'd like to. And I'll look into... I'll look into the idea of having episodes one and two posted on our YouTube as well, in case you guys would like to watch. Oh gosh, what did we do about those two? Those two streams were. Oh gosh, now I have to look back and remember which one those were now. So we had talked about. Oh, what was that? Our last two Science Saturdays involved. Ba, 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 what was involving? Starting pitchers, whether or not you needed to have. Two or more, if you had had three or more starting pitching pitches for your starter, if you could get away with having two pitches, could you do that? And then the first time we did it, that's right, it was catcher defense. We talked about catcher defense, whether or not it's important for you to have the best potential catcher defense you could get, or if you could get away 
with maybe not the best catcher defense in the world. Um, so, yeah, those were our last two streams. Um, I'll see if we can get those posted. The first one about catcher defense, we might redo um, because the stream crashed halfway through and we actually found out like three-fourths of the way through that stream that our entire test had been... Well, it was it was it was it was not working correctly because we had player strategies and team strategies turned on and the teams weren't even Steven. So that may actually get redone. So episode one might be redone uh, down the road, an official episode one, I guess at that point, if you want to call it that, uh, with uh, with actual better uh, working on that. It was our first episode. What do you expect from me? You know. <laughs> It was the first time I've ever streamed on the channel. It was the first time I've ever actually streamed in front of an audience this big. And I was I was a little nervous, guys. I was a little nervous. So, anywho, 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 anywho. Today, today we're going to be talking about feeder leagues. And for anybody who doesn't know what that is, and if you've only played Perfect Team of, by the way, my Perfect Team is getting throttled in silver. I, I feel so bad. It's a pretty good team, but it's not doing very well. So, yeah. But anywho, if you're interested in feeder leagues and you don't know what that is, we'll explain what that is, kind of talk you guys through some stuff. And then if you guys have any questions at all, any questions whatsoever about feeder leagues, how to set them up, I mean, we're going to run through how to set them up. But if you have questions about some of the details, some of the settings, please, by all means, go ahead and fire away questions in the chat. I'll try to make sure that I'm available and looking at chat to review those. Um, I don't want to spend too, too much time on feeder leagues today which is stupid saying that because it's the, it's the entire episode. But at the same time, I'd like to be able to show it off. So we're going to try to build it pretty quickly, kind of explain some of the concepts, and then show it off, let you guys see what it can do, and then um, see what we can do to, you know, maybe tweak it a little bit and some other stuff included. So, yeah, that'll be pretty cool. Um Tommy Edmund, one of the people from our Discord who actually got this whole entire thing started, actually has a league that needs feeders. Um, he's actually working with our uh, our dev team right now to figure out a problem with our draft creation system. There's some kind of an age bug he's got. So we're still working on doing that as well. But this all stemmed because of that bug, potentially bug, I guess. And there was a moment where he was like, well, I'll, if I can make a f custom feeder system, I would do that in a heartbeat, but I don't know how to make a custom feeder system. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to make a custom feeder system. Yeah. You took the catcher defense a step further and did decent hitter great D of Tony Pena versus a great hitter bad D. Oh, very cool. Great hitter, bad D1. Really? So the hitting ability of Piazza outplayed his really poor defense. Okay, interesting. That's good to know. So yes, we're going to be loading up, yeah, a fictional league, and that is his league. So it's called the United Baseball League, and so we'll go ahead and launch into it. It's currently in year 2034, so it's had, I'm assuming, at least 14 years of playtime. So... It's substantially large. Um, well, no, it's not substantially large. I've seen bigger. <clears throat> um, but uh, you know what I mean. Uh, it's it's definitely been a couple years in the making for him, probably. And it's had some history, and it's really cool looking. So I'm enjoying the looks of it so far. I glanced over it and looked at some stuff. He's got uh, a pretty decent setup with an MLB league, about six minor league uh, systems, an Arizona Fall League, which is basically a winter league system. And then he's got a couple of tournaments to go along with a last chance independent league, which is a perfect, perfect segue into what we need to do to begin a feeder system. So basically, he has everything in place but a feeder system, which is basically college and high school. So if you didn't know, OTP's single player mode, which is franchise mode, does allow you to have the option to have college and high school play at the same time as your major leagues. You can actually watch the kids play, in fact. And this will then influence your draft. So what you can do is instead of having the game make random people like Chris Green, who's had one year of college, but we don't have a team, we don't have, you know box scores we don't know why he hit 237 we think he does this but we don't really know it's really hard to understand you know how good a player is depending upon you know what you're looking at um and this this draft is actually pretty poor 
This is, this draft is actually really, really, really poor. 28 players? Wait. Do I have a filter on or something? No. Do you only have 28 players in your draft? Wow. Really, really small drafts. Um, is it still... Oh, the draft pool hasn't been announced yet. Okay. All right. All right. So he's still waiting for his draft pool announcement. Uh to get the rest of his draft people at this point. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So what um, what Tommy originally has for his setup is he's got, of course, his MLB team, and he's got it set up right now where it enables the amateur draft, and it creates, you know, it generates 28 rounds of players. Is there a way to get better players in the draft? Unfortunately, there is not a way to influence. Well, I mean, technically there... <sighs> That's a hard question, enforcement. There is, if you go to, um, if you go to players, your player creation modifiers can be changed. So if you want one league to get people who, if you want one league to get, because you can separate the draft into each MLB league. So if you have two major league baseball leagues, one of them could have people who have like no power, and the other one could have people who have power by simply changing this batting power modifier to like 0 0.500. Then they'd have half of the power that they usually would have for a league, or you can keep it at the default, which was like 990 or something like that. Um, so if you change the modifiers in the OTP player creation, that will directly affect who gets created and how good they are in the draft. Now, you can already see Tommy's tried to do his little fix for 22 years and younger for players created. Um, we're, st we're, we'll start, we're still working on that with the developers to see why that wasn't taking effect for the draft because he was getting some people who were aged weirdly. Um, but then again, we had some major problems with the draft on release day that were still making sure are fixed and patched out. So we are still working on stuff like that. If you guys spot any of those kind of things, um, let us know. We're more than happy to be able to work through that with you guys and make sure everything's good to go. So the difference between having a feeder system and not having a feeder system involved with your major league is that basically you won't have random players generated every single draft pool creation. So what's happening here in Tommy's league is that every single year, on the draft pool release, which happens for him on March 3rd, January, February, March, yeah. So on March 3rd, uh, Tommy's going to get a whole bunch of players made in his draft pool that are going to be random. They're just going to be completely made up on the spot by the AI, which isn't bad. That That's not a bad thing. For some people, that's fine. You know, you don't want to have the... There's an element of surprise that's kind of fun to play with. There's an element of like, okay, you don't know what you're going to get every single year. You know, you can't really see that far forward into the draft, and you can't plan that much, but it's cool because it's then, you know, a lot of it is like, you know, audibles on the last second, and, you know, you have to look at stuff. Uh, but at this point... The only issue that I've had with that setup is that sometimes you start to see issues with how the game makes players, and sometimes there's too many you know, starting pitchers, sometimes it makes too much of a certain position, and you just want to have more control. Sometimes you just want to have more control over it. You want to be able to see the players before they get draft pool announced, because at this point, you're looking at how many players is he going to have created for him. He's got, again, math. This is going to be math. So we're doing science and math today, guys. This is going to be a rough day for me because I was not good at math. And I wasn't exactly great at science. So we have 28 rounds of players that need to be created for a total of however many teams. So he's got what looks like 24 teams. 24 teams. Yep, there we go. So that means technically... He needs to have a minimum, a minimum of, oh boy, 24 times 672. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dishnet. I could do it visually, but it would take me a little bit of time. So he needs 672 players at minimum to be able to have a full round, well, 24 round, no, 28 round draft. So he has to go all the way down. If you go all the way down the bottom, 28 rounds, he needs to have 672 players. And in all honesty, you really need to have more than 672. 
you really need like 900 because there's going to be some people who are not that good. And even though you could get away with drafting them last, we would much rather have the league get better and better every single year. That's how baseball works is that the competition level goes higher and higher. Um, oh, it's 25 rounds right now? 20. That's right. 28 generated. That's right. That's right. So technically it's 25 times 24. My bad. You're right. You are, you're all right. You're right. Um, so you're looking at 20. Uh, again, math. 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 Hold on. I'm just going to do it fast. 25 times 24. So you're talking about... No, not minus. <laughs> A minimum of 600. Exactly, Dishnet. You're talking about a minimum of 600 players required for the league to have a full draft. But again, we'd rather probably see it be upwards of 750 to 900 just to be safe. Uh, you also don't want to have problems with your draft in terms of, you know, halfway through the draft, there's nobody good. Well, Technically, every single draft, you're going to get about halfway through, and there's nobody good left. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice almost broke there. But you want to have some diamonds in the rough. You want to have some people that maybe could develop. You don't want to look at the last, you know, 10 rounds, and it's just like, wow, do you want someone who has five contact or someone who's got six contact out of 100? So sometimes you need to have more to be able just to have it get a little bit higher quality because the more – amounts of players that you have and the more rounds you have generated the better chances you're going to have of having legendary or high quality players so if you find out that your league is having some really weak drafts and it's not doing it's not going well for you and the quality of your players are diminishing over time increase the amount of rounds you have or no the amount of generated rounds of players and that will increase your quality you could also look at those uh, modifiers. You could also look at the modifier settings. And uh, if you need to, maybe bump those up a little bit. But for most people, all you got to do is go into your rule settings and change the number of uh, uh, rounds that are generated. And that'll mostly give you some better players over time. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to make it say, I've got to have it come back. Where's my option for this? Oh, I don't have it set up yet. That's right. That's right. Because I have to actually set up the feeder system before I'm allowed to tell it to do zero. But we're actually going to say zero. And technically, I think that's actually just disable the automatic creation of free agents. I think that's what that is. But I have to remember that down the road. But yes, we're going to basically, we're going to basically tell it that nothing is going to be made. For the draft, because we're going to make it all from scratch. So give me one second, I'll get some water, and then we'll jump right into this. All right. Let's do this. So, there are a few things we need to know first about the league, about the players, and, um, and everything else. Well, I mean, you don't have to change that first. I was looking to see if we could change it first, but um, technically, as long as you change that before you get to the draft pool announcement, you're fine. If you get to the draft pool announcement and it still has generate players turned on, it will take your feeder players and it will generate more players and it will match them. It'll merge them together and you'll have way too many players. So you don't want to have both turned on. You don't want to have feeder systems and generating players <clears throat> unless unless you're really skimping on feeder teams and um, you need to have just some backup players made over time. You could do that. You, you could. You could. Setting to the bottom, so you allow Major League leagues, uh, deals for draft picks. That's if you wanted to be able to sign someone to an actual Major League contract directly out of the draft. That is only a good thing if you're doing, like, um, historical leagues. If you're doing a historical league where the player coming out of the uh, draft are, like, you know, fully potential, you know, Ken Griffey Jr. is, like, the first-round pick, you want to sign him to a Major League pick right off the bat because, basically, he's going to play on your Major League roster right off the bat. 
but most of these rookies are not good to go. So you don't want to do that. Expansion draft uh, first is basically if you have an expansion happen over the course of the year, the next uh, the next draft they will actually pick first. Um, I think that's normally pre-allotted to be first for most expansion draft teams, but I guess now we have an option to check that. Um, if we d -d 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 -d. normally, if you hover over stuff, it'll actually tell you what it is, but uh, in some cases it won't. So not for that one, unfortunately. But that's what I've understood about that, at least, is that basically if you have expansion teams, it'll just basically make sure that they draft first in case the draft happens after a season and maybe they're not the worst teams, which would be amazing in and of itself. So, yes. Yeah, so like what the Tigers did with Alkaline when he was 18. Exactly. Exactly, Dish Dad. Exactly. You of all people would know that. <laughs> oh, man. I would, I would never have... Never have suspected that you would know that information as the devoted Tigers fan that you are. Okay, so anywho, let's get started. Um, we need to know a few things about the league in terms of its size. Because in the end, what we have to do is we have to generate enough feeder teams to supply this major league system and its minor systems, you know, all our minor leagues, they need to be able to draft enough players to be able to continue functioning. Functioning. Sorry, not functioning. Functioning. So there's some really good information on the manual, actually, for the game about feeder leagues. And I'll see if I can bring it up here real fast so you guys can understand. Because there are some instructions that we talk about in the manual to help with feeder leagues. So... If you don't know, we actually do have an online manual. I'll go ahead and bring it up on screen here. There we go. So, basically, it describes what a feeder league system is, what it does. But then there's also some really good and vital information down below. How many feeder leagues should I create? So, basically, if you're going to set up a feeder league system, you need to read this or listen to my voice for the next 30 minutes because I'm going to explain all of this, basically. So the number of feeder leagues you create is completely up to you. That's correct. However, most people who use feeder leagues prefer to set them up in such a way that your parent leagues, first year player draft, yada, 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 will be completely populated with the feeder league players. Exactly. That's what we're doing. So we need to know how many draft rounds we're going to need in your first year player draft, this is the first thing that's going to need to be done. Because in the end, we need to understand how many rounds that your league needs. And that means that the 25, or was it, yeah, 25 rounds that, uh, that uh, the Tommy has set up, we might be changing that. Yeah. We're going to mess stuff up. So basically, the way that we have discovered, no, not the way we've discovered, but the way that the math works. We need to change the number of rounds in the amateur draft. It is supposed to be five times the number of levels of minor leagues in your game. So what that basically means is that Tommy has one, two, three, four, five. I say technically six, technically six different tiers or different uh, different leagues for his minors. So that means the game would recommend that there be 30 rounds. Now you could get away with 25. You could because technically the warm weather league and the youngsters league are a little bit well, they're not exactly that smaller. Let me see. Uh no, they're not smaller at all. Yeah. Unfortunately, if they were small, I would be all okay with that. That that'd be fine. I, I could get away with that. But because they're still about the same size as single A and double A and even triple A, they're basically both separate rookie systems, um, which means we need to categorize them as individual leagues, not combined. So unfortunately, if we don't, and here's why we do it that way. If we don't have enough rounds in the draft, players, you're going to start to see a lack of players on teams. So let's see if that's the case. Let's see if that's actually the case. Oh. Case in point A. If you don't have enough rounds 
you're going to start having problems filling teams because teams aren't going to draft enough players. And you're going to start to have problems with uh, you know teams just not having full rosters. So, um, yeah, we probably need to increase the draft rounds to 30 for this, for this league. Now I feel like a doctor of some kind. <laughs> this league is actually pretty good. It's actually a really well-done league. I'm actually really happy with it so far. Um, but we definitely need, need definitely need to increase this uh, the draft rounds to 30. Uh, just so that way every single league is going to be filled up correctly and we're ready to go. Because everything else seems okay. So if you go back to the overall rosters. So he currently has 38 players on his active roster. So those will end up trickling down a little bit. Oh, 30 of 30s. Okay, so you're doing a non-traditional uh, roster size in the minors of 30 of 30s. Instead of 25 over 25s or 26 over 26. Um, so that's that could be, you know, three players there. Five players, five players. So you're talking about 13 13 with maybe, say, another 6 there. Probably could do another maybe even, like, 10 there. So you're talking about a full team's worth. It's all up in your single A and above systems. And I know you probably want that. So I'm not going to change any of those roster settings. We'll keep them the way they are. But when you have roster sizes like these, um, that will also increase your size of your draft that you need to be able to do. Because what we always have concluded or at least what the game has concluded and people have found out, is that basically there are... Um, the rule of thumb, and this is where I got it from, the rule of thumb is that you need you will need five new players for each level of minors to replace people who retire, have long-term injuries, or, you know, you 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 give away to free agency because you're done with them. You're done. You're, they're, they're, they're terrible. You're getting rid of them. So it's about five players. So technically, you're going to lose about 30 players, permanently lose 30 players every single year. So you need 30 draft picks, at least 30 draft picks, to be able to fill your team. Now, you could also look at free agency, but if everybody else looks at free agency as well, free agency will start to have problems. So let's check free agency really fast, and let's see what the free agency looks like. Let's see. So there are, oh wow, okay, so there's a lot of players in the free agency system right now. 1,962 players in the free agency system, of which most are not that good, which is traditional. That's traditional, what you'll see for most uh, most organizations and most leagues. Um, got a couple people that are still really good, and Alex Martinez on this list. I'd grab him in a heartbeat. Man, that fielding's really good. Um, so that's not bad. That's a pretty good amount of free agents that are left to sign. And, you know, teams should be able to make do with that. And I know you also do have Edmund, I know, or Tommy, I know you also have, um, technically a last chance league, which is an independent league, which is basically a catch all league. This is what I would refer, refer to as a catch all league. Um, the independent leagues are basically places where players who are not that good, or didn't get signed, and but but still want to play baseball, will end up resorting to playing on uh, with these organizations, and those are great ways. That's a great way to talk. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later, but it's a great way to to catch any of the players who don't end up signing or playing in the major league leagues, um, because otherwise they just fill up your free agency. So, yeah. Uh, talking about with the formula. If a short single A, uh, it depends on the size of your A minus system. His A minus system is still 24 players. I'm sorry, 24 teams. So unfortunately, his short A system is basically just a small jump step, but it's a full league. Um, so yes, it should be treated as a full league. It would be cool to go over the financials of independent leagues sometimes. Um... I mean, technically, they get their own financial tab. So if you ever needed to, you can go to an international league, go to their financials. Oh, no, wait, that's the minor league. Uh, if you go to the Last Chance League, they have their own financial system. When, what ends up happening is if you're the GM of an independent league, the financials that you'll see for free agents will be reflective, I believe they'll be reflective, of your different financial setup. So if a player wants to sign with you, they will agree to these 
financial terms versus major league financial terms. They're, they're different terms, different whole entire setups, but you can edit these if you'd like to. Um, it's just, it's hard to find that, you know, former MLB player that wants to play in an independent league. Most major league baseball players would prefer to go play in AAA than an independent league because that's just one step from the show versus like four or five steps from the show, which is basically what an independent league is. So unfortunately, you're not going to be able to go and sign, you know, Mike Trout to your independent league. It's just not going to happen. Um, you'll see some people on this list who probably had former, like, AAA, maybe AAA, AA um, uh, time periods. Like someone, here played, someone here played in single A, but then left. And that gets into league quality ratings. Um, in terms of what, Dishnet? Yes, you can change the reputation in terms of the league quality. That is true. If you change the independent league, if, wow, well, we're going way off track from feeder leagues now. But um, basically, yes, if you go into here, you have a league reputation option for how well the league is basically viewed by players. So if you have your independent league and you want them to be, you know, okay, maybe if I'm in double A, this is the equivalent of a, you know, independent league. Because this, this one independent league is really good. So a lot of people who are double A get to play there and they think that it's about on par. Um, so you can do a 10 at that point, or maybe like an eight. Um, you won't be able to have an independent league ever. Well, no, if you put an MLB to like one and put an independent league to 10, that wouldn't be too, too bad. But, you know, you're not going to have an independent league ever be the same, you know, desire to play on as an MLB major league league. It's just not going to happen. So you're never going to see a you know starter on a major league squad suddenly be like, I want to go play in an independent league for like you know ten times less the amount of money. Yeah, it's just it's just not going to happen unless they're like really falling behind on their abilities and you know stuff isn't playing well. Ah, for example, here's somebody who played in uh, a couple years in the UBL and then played in AAA. In fact, no, University. Did he just come out of the baseball league? Yeah, he just came out of the real MLBs to play an independent ball. He is fragile. He's 36 years of age. I think he's had um, injuries. He became a free agent and then signed a one-year deal of $256,000 to play with the Waco boom uh, Boomers. Uh, that was after he was making, again, that's about a 10%. <laughs> that, was, that was about a 10% uh, pay cut. Um, he went unsigned for a whole year. That's what happened. Yeah. So basically he was unsigned for a whole year and finally someone was willing to give him money to play baseball again. And that was, that was Waco. So this guy took about a 10% pay cut, but it took him a year to finally allow himself to do that because I'm guessing he would never have signed with the boomers right after becoming a free agent at the age of 34. He would have been like, are you crazy? No way. Because uh, he's he's pretty good. I mean, for the last chance independent league, he's a four-star player. But for, you know, even like AAA, he's three and a half. But for MLB, he's only two and a half. So he's not bad. Uh, hopefully he bounces back, has a good year in the independent ball, and maybe a major league team signs him to a contract. That's that's what you use it for. So anywho, anywho, back to feeders. Back to, back to what we were trying to do before, the feeder system. So we need to have five new players for each level of minors that we have in our system. So we have six. We have six tiers or levels of minors, uh, minor league systems here to be able to do. So we need 30 rounds of, uh, of drafting to be able to make this work. So, da 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 so now we have to decide on the number of feeder teams. We need to populate the draft. Um, each feeder team is going to produce about six to nine players. No, not six to nine. Stop it, guys. Um, six to nine players, depending on, you know, the year and how many people are being cycled through. Um, taking the number of players needed for the draft and dividing by six gives you the minimum number of feeder teams that we're going to need. So basically, again, math involved. The number of feeder teams that we're going to need to have created by the end of this stream is going to equal the number of teams in our parent league, which is 24. There's 24 organizations. 
and then we need to times that by the number of draft rounds we want to have. Now, we could go higher than 30, but for this example, I'm just going to do 30 because at this point, I think we're going to be okay. I think 30 will be just fine. You know what? No, let's do 35. We'll... We'll, we'll basically say we're going to make more feeder leagues than is required just to be safe. Then, that number, which is times, so 24 times, uh, blah, 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 more math. So, 840 is the number of players we want to make from this feeder system. And to be able to get that to be the point where there's about six players, six to nine players coming from each team. We divide that number by six. So you're talking about 140 feeder teams. You need 140 feeder teams to be able to do this correctly. Okay? Now, you might be thinking that's a lot of teams. And thankfully, there's a way to help with that. Because that is a lot of teams. And once you start getting into custom feeder leagues, your game is going to start slowing down. A, a lot. Okay? Once you start getting into massive, uh, massive amounts of teams like that, it can start to slow stuff down. So basically, there is a way to have the game make the feeder system for you. I know. It's crazy. You don't even have to make it. The game will make it for you. All we have to do is edit it to our liking. So, you could make it from scratch if you'd like to. Or, you can simply go to League Actions. And then you can go to Add Minor slash Feeder Leagues. And add a complete Feeder League system. And it'll be like, alright. Oh, this is even new. Um, cool. This is something new I've never seen before. Uh, anywho. <clears throat> Amateur draft rounds. We're going to be doing 30. Target high school amount of players to basically assume how many players we need to get from our high school system. Um, anywhere between 30 and 40 is probably going to be about right. Remember, high school kids have higher potential, but they're not developed yet. Okay? College people and JUCO players are going to be a little bit more developed, but they're also going to be much more reliable. They're going to be already kind of working out the kinks in their systems versus high school players who are pretty much raw. They're pretty much going to be just the default situation at this point. So, you know, you want to make sure that whatever you do, if you do 100% high school, you're going to get a lot of really top-tier players, but they're going to fizzle out over time because they're high school players. They're not actually going to hit that bar 100% of the time. So, um... I always go with like a 30 to 40% high school. Sometimes I'll do 50% if I'm feeling really, really adventurous. Um, but in this regard, that's pretty good. I think this is not enough teams. This is going to be 48. Okay, hold on. 48 plus 8 plus 28. That's only 84 teams. So that's about half of the amount of teams that we need, I believe. Because we need about 140 teams if we want to do this correctly. Right? Right? Isn't that correct? 24, 35. Well, let's just say, let's just try 30 for right now. If we do 30, 30 rounds by the 24 teams, that's 720 divided by 6. 120 is about the amount of teams that we would need to get. Um, so... Technically, 84 teams is probably not going to be enough. So we may duplicate the college system and say two college leagues, two high school leagues, and one junior college league and see what that would do. Because that would technically be... That'd be 112, which is about eight, eight teams lower than we think mathematically that we will need. So that's perfect. So we're going to include... Now, you could technically double the size of the teams and then only do one league if you wanted to. There is an option for that. In fact, let's just do that instead. 48, 1, and then that would be 56, 1. In fact, let's just go ahead and double this too. Let's say 16. So we'll do 48 high school teams, 56 college teams, and 16 junior college teams. Sound about right, guys? That's going to be about 100 and... That's actually roughly 118. I think, no, is that 120 exactly? 
120. Exactly. Awesome. That's perfect. There we go. Okay. Awesome. So, now we're good to go. We can go ahead and create the feeder leagues. And it'll go ahead and it will make all of the uh, logistics for those feeder systems. And it will add them. You can see I already added them into our current feeder leagues. So now, the default is 30. But we should be able to say... If I can do it without having anything. Let me see if it'll let me do it or not. Uh, they may have taken that away in 21. Oh, oh no, there it is, right there. Duh, I'm, I'm still here. So, feeder league players only. That's what we want, okay? We want to tell the game that the feeder league players are the only ones that are going to be involved in the draft feeding mode. So what this means is it's not going to generate any players. We could put this to one if we wanted to just to be safe, but we shouldn't have any players generated that are not from our feeder system now. And I think normally that had a zero. Uh, so the pool is very low. This always happens as well. You want to make sure that you do have enough players. Otherwise, like it just said, you don't want to have too little of a draft pool or else there won't be enough players to actually fill your draft. So we still may have like five rounds maybe generated. Uh, just so that way there's a little bit of backup in case we have a short season for these high school and college and junior college systems. Um, but we should be able to go ahead and take a look at those guys now. There they are. So we've got our college, JUCO, and high school systems now. Okay. So let's take a look at these guys real fast. So there's going to be a ton of teams. <laughs> a lot of them. All right. And they already have players. So now you can see we already have somebody. Oh, no, don't release him. What am I doing? Click on him. <laughs> what? What happened to your uniform? Put some clothes on, dude. Hold on. Let me see if I can get figure out what's wrong here now. Good grief. What did it do to these teams? Of course, it takes forever. Okay, let's see. What did it do? Do I need to have it just automatically redo the logos? I think I need to have it redo to his. Yeah, they um, they're they're um, they're not wearing anything. Anywho, let me grab some. Let's see. I need to tell it to do. What do I need to do? I need it to do. Where am I? Where are my options for? Jerseys, 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 jerseys. Is that player and face gen? I think it is. Uh, da, 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 da. No, I have to do that for everybody, don't I? Let's see. Team logos, caps, jersey logos. I don't mean, I don't want jersey logos. They're playing shirts and skins baseball. <laughs> uh, but see, I thought it was a league actions thing. Yeah, I thought it was in part of... Uh, da, 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 da. Am I missing it? Edit the part, structures, resetting, erasing, resetting, releasing, playing, randoming, randomizing, randomizing. Uh, I don't think you can actually do a full-fledged jersey refresh. I don't know if that's... um. I think that's something we actually have to go into every single team and edit, so I don't know why... I don't know why it didn't grab any colors or logos. What did it... Wait, does it even have logos for these teams? Oh, okay, so there's no logos. Why did it... Oh, because their names are probably... Well, no, that shouldn't... That wouldn't make any sense. Why are the... Hmm... Like, some of these should have logos. So we need to check the logos for the teams... So let me see if I can make the game try to find these logos again, because that's what's wrong. That's what's wrong. Update. Not for the league. I want to make... I hope I'm not doing this for the wrong league. Let me see. Go to the start screen. 
From the box at the bottom. Oh, that's right, because it would then uh, look for all the logos at that point. <laughs> if I have to, I'll, I'll, I'll restart if I have to. But you are right. I, I, I can't stop it now, unfortunately. Um, I'm resetting all the team logos. I don't think that's going to be for... Actually, that might be for everybody. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tommy. If I have to, I will, I will bring the logos back in. Uh, but you are right. We should be able to go back out to the main screen, and then when we load it in, have it uh, check for logos, anything that's missing, because you can technically do that, and it will be just fine. So if I have to, I will do that again. That's not a problem. Because I, uh, I have the zip. I've got your zip still saved here, so I can very quickly get that back. Plus, we can always make some quick changes and mess up stuff. That's Science Saturday. That's what we do. We mess stuff up. Okay, so we'll let that go through. I'll see if this works or not, and then if it doesn't, then we can definitely go the other route instead. But yeah, if we, uh, if we exit out of the game and then come back in, uh, when you load the game, there's a way to check for any missing or updated um, logos, pictures, anything that may be not loading correctly you can have the game double check for stuff like that and um yeah that's gonna be the the better way of doing that so let's just go ahead and go through real fast ba -ba -ba -ba. i'll get some water really fast and then we'll see how badly we damaged everything personally i want to see if it even works to do it this way because I don't even know if that will fix the teams that are missing missing pictures. I don't know if that even would. Okay, that does. Okay, so we just need to have it double check stuff. Because I'm guessing, I'm guessing that we just messed up a whole bunch of custom stuff that he was doing. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, those messed it up. Okay, so let me go back out really fast. Hold on a second, guys. Now I gotta go back out to the main menu. Re-unzip the folder, delete the old folder, and yeah, that's science. The best way to send me a question is either to post it right here in the in the uh, chat, or you can send me a DM on Discord. I'm more than happy to answer questions on either of those two places. If it's a question that requires a little more, you know, personal question than, you know, a global chat question, you can absolutely do that as well. Um, but yeah, Discord, if you're going to DM me on Discord, I'm more than happy to answer questions there. Uh, you can also, oh, that was a bright flash of something. Uh, you can also do it right here in the, uh, in the chat for Twitch. That's just fine as well. All right, so let's get rid of the old league. We're going to re-unzip the league because that's why I saved the zip folder just in case we have any problems. So what we can do instead is when we hit the load, we can run a full check. <clears throat> full check for correct logos, jerseys, excuse me, and caps. And we'll see if that works instead, because that might actually be better. All right. Just waiting for this to finally decide to delete. There we go. Wow, it was actually... Uh... Discord, I got it. Sent you the two pictures. Uh... Oh, are you the person that was having the problem with... Um, um... Uh, man, I I wish I was as quick on the forums as I am on Discord. Um, I think you had the problem about... Oh, gosh. Well, we, which one was that? That was the one about leagues, and you had asked me a question about something. Hold on. I, I remember it vaguely. <laughs> I'm so bad. I'm sorry. I, I, I try my darndest to be available everywhere, but unfortunately, I have been stretched pretty thin the last couple of of uh of weeks that's right the fictional league help you were wanting to have questions about uh minor league affiliation and not having players or teams be affiliated to minor league systems and whether or not players would be able to go play on those non-affiliated teams uh while they were waiting for uh major league ball clubs to basically grab them again yes can you feed uh nippon baseball league i'm guessing that's what you mean by mpb players into an MLB draft. Um, unfortunately, Michael, that's actually a MLB restriction. Um, the MLB and the Nippon players, 
uh, league, whatever they're called, the baseball system for Japan, um, they do not have any agreement to um, uh, to have players be able to be drafted uh, into the MLB draft. Um, if you wanted to do that in your game, you could make an association and have both leagues be involved in the same world draft. That is possible. Um, if you set up your two different leagues, so while we're waiting for this to unzip, what you could do is you could do a new custom game. Actually, no, not a custom game. You can do just a simple default start. If you did a standard game and then had the Nippon Professional Baseball League involved, you could do that. And I'm, I'm, I should not be doing this right now because we're working on something else. But I'm going to answer this question real fast. If you do this and then make an association and have both of those two leagues be part of the association, you'd be able to then have them use a shared amateur draft. So that's the best way you can have... Technically, that's not even really Nippon League players because you're talking about most likely people coming out of the Nippon League, which that's unfortunately... Um, I don't think that's possible to have them involved in the draft. Uh, most likely than not, they can be purchased. Most of the time, teams will buy Nippon players uh, like they do in real life. Um, unfortunately, it's just it's just not possible to have them involved in the draft. So the only way you can do a draft would be to have both leagues get the amateur draft for new players. And then you can get someone who would have been playing in the Nippon League into the Major League Baseball system, but you can't draft. You can't draft Nippon League players coming out of the Nippon League into the incorporated MLB draft. Not that I'm aware of. I just I don't think that's possible yet. That is a good question, though. I, I would be interested to see if maybe one day MLB would be willing to include that in the MLB draft. Be like, all right, here's the ten players Nippon is going to be, or you know, Japan is going to be giving us to include in our draft system. Um, we're going to, you know, make you guys can scout them and then draft them wherever you want to. That would actually be really, really cool um, since that would add some different flair to the MLB draft, and maybe that would actually be really cool uh, to have just even as a feature. But um, unfortunately, that is not something that is natively uh, available to utilize. Okay. We good to go here, MLB, or, uh, OTP? Okay. I should not have done this, unfortunately, because now that I'm thinking about it, it's not even possible to do. So, we'll come back out of here, because the other one's ready to go. So, let's load back up the United Baseball League. And then another question here, for a small market team, spending the least amount of money is important. What is the best budget catcher that is easy to trade for? Tony Wolters. <laughs> I'm biased, but Tony Walters is, in my opinion, one of the most underrated catchers in OOTP. Um, he'll give you above average uh, ability as a catcher, and his arm is like, I think it's like 72 out of 80, and he only costs like 700,000, and he'll never ask for more than like one and a half million or two million at most. Um, he's a great budget catcher to get. Unless you're talking about PT. I think you're talking about single player here. So, yeah. Wolters gets my vote because he's easy to trade for. The Rockies don't want much for him. You can get him pretty dirt cheap. Uh, and he's a great pickup. Otherwise, you're looking at someone like a Jason Castro. Jason Castro is also really, really good. And he's really good for your uh, team chemistry. So, I always go for catchers that have leadership abilities because that's kind of like their big thing. Um, so yeah, darn it. I didn't, oh no, no, we haven't set up yet. That's right. That's right. For a second there, I was not happy because I thought I had forgotten to set up the look for logos, but we do need to set up the expansion. So let's go ahead and get back to where we were, which was a complete feeder system for 30 rounds. We wanted to do one league of 50, uh, 48 and one of 56 and then 16. And we'll go ahead and create our feeder league systems. And then you also added on another question to that. Looking for an easy starting pitcher to trade for. Not many prospects and cannot afford over... Is that 8 million? 8 million? Um, I mean, the hardest part is that that's what everybody in baseball today values. Are the young starting pitchers like Mike Soroka 
and German Vasquez or German Marquez uh, or Herman Marquez. I'm sorry, Herman Marquez. Um, you know, if you're looking for somebody who's young, really good prospect, you're going to have to give them a lot of money for it. You're going to have to give them a lot of either prospects of your own or you're going to give them a lot of stuff. It's just those are the hardest players to get. They just are. And the only people that are normally available who would be young and good starting pitchers are already paid a bunch. Like uh, Severino is a good example of that. Luis Severino is a young, really good starting pitcher, but the Yankees will give him to you because he costs like $11 million, even though he's still like 26, 27. So I think he's 26, 27. Anywho, either way, um, starting pitchers are hard to trade for. They're very hard to trade for. Um, the Rule 5 draft is okay, but I've never really seen many starting pitchers end up on the Rule 5 draft. Not very many good ones, at least, Deho. Um, but yes, it is. that is a good idea. Um, we just recreated the college system and the high school system, so I need to go back in and take a look at these guys, and we'll have to run a check afterwards, I'm assuming. So let me go ahead and do that really fast. Because, yeah, we're still waiting to see if the jerseys worked. I need to go to standings. No. Okay, so we need to go back out. So we're going to save the game. So we have our default starting point. And then we're going to go back out of the game and load back into the game and have it check for um, for jerseys and other stuff that's important for us. Once it's done, saving the current version of the database because it's going to get really big now. Once you start getting into feeder systems, the league size is going to expand a little bit do you change the trade preferences or evaluation percentages yes normally i do um i i, I know the devs are probably gonna be like wow he doesn't like the default game settings um they're okay i don't mind the default game settings but um i'm i'm a little more partial to um like this is 50 30 15 5 that's actually really good like this is normally what i would go for right here trading difficulty um, I almost, I almost always make it favor prospects. I almost always do. Um, because otherwise you can steal away some pretty decent prospects for free. So we didn't do that in our red series. And I don't know why we didn't do that in our red series. Cause we've, we've taken advantage of some teams. Well, I want to do a year end review of all the trades we did in that big rich machine series, because I think some of those deals are actually going to come back and bite us badly. Um, not that we're going to miss out on prospects that we gave away, but I think some of the people that we got in some of those trades are really going to turn into nothing for us, which is going to be sad. But anywho, that's another whole entire subject. Um, trade difficulty, I almost always keep it at average. I find that the AI is actually pretty decent in my opinion. Um, sure, you can definitely try to scum the AI into doing, into doing trades, especially if you have, uh, trading draft picks turned on. That's the one issue I've always had with uh allow trading draft picks is that you can totally totally lowball uh an ai for like one of their best prospects by just offering a couple of draft picks included which is kind of silly um I, I i that might be something that i recommend to the devs to change is that they need to have a different uh value system for draft picks on how highly teams value a draft pick um because there are some situations where you could give them, you know, a couple of middle round draft picks for basically like a starting player, which just doesn't make any sense at all. So there are definitely some things you can do to help with the trade uh, evaluations and how the AI uses stuff. Uh, 50, 30, 15, 5 for the evaluation AI settings is pretty good. That's a pretty good percentage to have, in my opinion. I think that does a good job. Okay. Let's go ahead and go back out. We've saved the game. We're going to head back out and try to have it redo those jerseys and logos for us because they're not loading correctly somehow, and I don't know why. Nothing to add to my list of stuff to review. So we'll do that really fast. All right. All righty, let's get this guy going. I'm going to go ahead and save that again. Probably should have just closed out of the game because it was going to save it anyways. I, but I'm a redundant saver. I like to save and save again. So we're going to run a full check with, for corrected logos, jerseys, and caps after the loading of the league. We'll see if that actually uh, 
if that fixes our issue with those logos. Otherwise, we'd have to go into every single team and probably do a quick auto fix to see if that uh, if that fixes the issue. So yeah. All right. Any other questions at all from you guys about the game? I'm more than happy to answer questions while we wait for this to load up. And uh, it's going to go ahead and check those. Yep, it's going to go ahead and check the team logos real fast for us. But if you guys have any more questions, I'd be more than happy to answer those right now. Oof. Oh. oh, I love Lazy Saturdays, though. These are the best ones. Or at least somewhat lazy. Somewhat lazy. Yeah, this should work. This should give us the corrected logos. It'll find them, the ones that are missing, and it should add those into our league, which will give us our full uh, full feeder system. Yeah. Alex has to do tech support in his own game. Well, technically it's not... I mean, technically it's not my game. I, I don't have direct development influence on this game. I am literally just the go-between man for you guys and the devs to make sure that everybody's happy not so much the pr rep but just to make sure that stuff is working correctly if you guys find something that's buggy or not working my job is to report it get it fixed with the developers help and then tell you guys it's been fixed that's literally my job so technically it's not my game although technically for how many hours and years of my life i've put into this game i could probably just say it's my game <laughs> no nah, i'm just kidding i would never say that okay so, we need to check the college systems. Good. They actually have logos, finally. All right. So, they should be all fixed now. Yes. They're fixed. Good. Hopefully, that didn't... Hopefully, that didn't uh, mess up a bunch of other stuff. Let me see. No, I don't think it did. Good. He even has the, uh, the really good logos. Nicely done. Nicely done. That's good logo work. Oh, did this one get changed, though? Uh, it might have. It might have gotten changed. We'll see. The Washington Senators have a different logo now, too. But we'll see about that. It's all the same? Oh, good. All right. Never mind, then. Okay, so. <clears throat> this should be our full system of feeder systems. Wow, I said systems twice. That's great. Great job, Alex. Uh, we have our high school, our junior college, and our college system. So we should all be good to go. Um, these teams will now generate players over the course of every single year. The game will make players for these teams, and then they will play. They will play real games. You'll be able to watch those games if you want to. You can even see the box scores for those games. And the one thing I want to check is... I need to know... I need to know how good these people are. Can I get away with that? Probably not. So let's just take a look at something else real fast. Uh, nope, I was just on that team. Let's try that really fast. I'm just, I want to check for quality for some of these teams. I just want to make sure that they're doing okay on the development side of things. Oh, that's right. That's what I wanted to do. Turn that on, please. There we go. Okay. So, this is in terms of what they would look like for a junior college level. I, I was thinking about that, uh, Tommy. I was thinking about just putting it on to 100%. That can sometimes cause some issues with your scouts, but it shouldn't. So, I think we'll be okay to say 100% active for right now. Just for a little bit, we're going to say 100% just so we can see what the players look like in these college and high school systems. So, we want to compare that to big leagues, though. So let's take a look and make sure that we're doing a good job. All right, so junior college only has 193 players, so there really isn't that much of a chance of there being somebody really, really good. Um, but right now, Tyler Brown is considered the best prospect in your junior college system, and that's actually really good. That is actually really good. I would, um, I would draft this guy. I would totally draft this guy. The ground ball, extreme ground ball, Psy Armor, pitcher type is ground ball. Yeah, I would totally draft this guy in a heartbeat. Okay, let's take a look at college. College has got eight, uh, 667 players. 
And right now they've got a closer that's pretty good and a couple starting pitchers that are pretty good. Oh, that's just, that's just pitchers. Duh. There we go. There's a better player. Ryan Seals. So, so no cheating. No cheating, Tommy. You're not allowed to draft this kid now because you know how good he is. So no cheating. He's not yours. Not yours, okay? You're not seeing the screen. You're not seeing these results because you're not allowed to cheat like this, all right? We're just testing. This is just a test. <laughs> just a test. All right, let's check high school real fast. High school's got Darnell Corley. Uh, looks like Joe Marcel is the uh, is the best starting pitcher, unfortunately. Uh, not bad, though. Pretty good stuff right there. And again, these are all players before they get to develop. So this is a 16-year-old. He'll be available in the 2036 draft in two years. We can see that in the bottom left-hand corner. So he has two years to develop as a starting pitcher, which means that velocity can go up, the stuff can go up, the control can go up or down, the movement can go up or down, the stamina can go up or down. <laughs> cheaters, cheaters, a lot of you. All right, let's double check the Junko system real fast. Yeah, yeah, so Tyler Brown is still pretty good, but we also have David Patterson and Justin Trent. So that's a pretty good group of kids. So if we go to, do, 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 I don't think it'll populate these kids into the draft pool yet. Spraying, no, Tyler Brown's right there. Okay, so we have them, boom, right into our, uh, our draft pool for 2034. Some of them are going to be here. And some of them are probably, let me see, like, like Brent Spring's already uh, fragile, unfortunately. But um, as you can see, the players are already showing up in our draft system. And as you simulate days and they play games, their statistics will change. They will act just like real players because they're literally real players in your system, in, in your game. They will play games, they will develop, they will get better. They can also get injured. So you got to be careful when you start to notice that someone's been injured occasionally. So watch out for people who, you know, have had a couple injuries during their high school and college years. And, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much that. Um, we need to go ahead and change some settings so that way everything's good to go. And then we'll double check our feeder system. Uh, because we do want to make sure that everything is working correctly. So we're doing 30 rounds. That happens on June 1st. I double. I need to double check and make sure that their schedules aren't going to interfere with each other. What are we looking at? So June. Okay, good. They end in April. Awesome. So the way that it happens is that the game will automatically set up the schedules and everything for these college, high school, and junior college feeder systems. The one thing you don't want to do is have them be playing the regular season or playoffs and then suddenly have their players drafted from their team to the big leagues. You don't want to do that. So it's very simple and easy to make the feeder system. It just takes a little bit of math to know how many teams you need. And then if you were going to do it from scratch, it becomes even tougher because you have to do a whole bunch of settings and other stuff. But because we have the whole entire league actions and the ability to auto-create those feeder systems, it's actually become so much more easier the past couple of years for OTP to be able to do this correctly and to have it all done for you with all the settings you need and the rules. Because in the end, look, you have to have active roster player age limits set up. You need to have creation stuff set up. 19 and 23 is the league defaults. Um, when you have it automatically created, yes, it does automatically attach them to the major leagues no it won't attach them to one major league team though no 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 no. it just attaches the league to the major league to be included in the first year player draft so these are not direct affiliates to any organization so these aren't you know affiliates like you would find in a rookie system which they have affiliations um when you do college or high school or junior college they're just teams they're not affiliated with anybody they're not going to develop for their particular organization they're just going to do this kind of stuff right here technically technically you could create a quote-unquote 
college rookie league that you could have the game develop or create players for. So there's a, there's a spinoff where you could change uh, something like a warm weather league and you would go into like stats and or no, players and you would change these uh, saber sabermetric player creation modifiers. You would add player uh, player settings, and then you would have it um, create players for the league. I believe there there's a certain way you could technically look at doing that, but it would be very complicated. It'd be very very complicated to try to have a a, like a player development system that was already assigned to organizations on a situation by situation basis. That would be more so equivalent to what uh, soccer, football does uh, in Europe, I believe. So you could try to pull that off. Y you could. Um, it would just be really hard, and you'd have to know what you're doing. I'd have to do an entire stream on how you would set that up because that would require a whole bunch of manual work to make sure that actually worked just fine. Also, okay, he's got some weird setups there. Anywho. Uh, can this be done for the regular MLB game? Uh, so we can create the entire MLB NCAA structure. Yes, you can create the entire NCAA structure. In fact, there are some people who have already made the NCAA structure and have, um, templates of the NCAA structure you can import into your game. Uh, I know somebody else has already done that. Uh, the issue is that is a huge league. You guys do realize that inside of the NCAA baseball, uh, how many teams there are. There are a ton of teams. If you're going to get all of those teams, it's it's massive. Just the, uh, just the fact that there are so many conferences that you'd have to incorporate. Like, let me see. Let's see. How many are there? There are 297 Division I schools that competed in 2019. 297. We just made about 120 right off the bat. But that's, a, that, that's 297 college teams. Just college. That's a, that's a ton. So if you wanted the most realistic NCAA league, you can do that. Um... Technically, I was working on something a couple of years ago where I was taking like only people who had actually made the College World Series appearance. I only incorporated them, uh, and that brought the list down to like eighty, I believe. It was still, it was still a lot. It was still a lot of teams. So it was probably too much work to try to really do that much of a college system. But you could absolutely do it. You can absolutely do it if you want to make your own college system, your own college feeder system, and then rename all of these to actual teams. You could even put, um, you know, different, uh, uh, different, uh, what are they called? Uh, divisions? I think technically the conferences, sorry. You could make every single one of the divisions a conference, and you could even just name it the conference, and then have all the teams in that conference just listed right there, and then you could have them all play against each other. You can absolutely do that. Um... There are some people who are trying their hardest to get an, a, a, a legit NCAA tournament, uh, or not a tournament, but a league with the actual players involved. Um, since we actually have databases of some of the college players currently in college, um, but again, it just it takes so much time. It just it takes so much time to make that happen. For some of those people who are working on that, you know, hats off to them. I. I tried it once for like a week, and I was like, nah, it's, it's just too much work. It's just the devotion you need to college baseball is just so high to make that happen. All right, so anywho, we need to go ahead and save this game because I want to test this out because it's science Saturday. We test stuff out. It's what we do. All right, so we're going to save this, and then we're going to see if... First of all, if the game breaks, just for trying to save this right now, um, we're going to go ahead and then simulate some time and see if we've set it up correctly because we need to double-check some stuff. We need to double-check 
that everybody involved in the pool, draft pool, is just the players we made. We don't want anybody else involved. We want it just to be the players we made. So let me go ahead and copy this, paste it in my documents so I can save this as a duplicated version. There we go. There's the save situation. So you all can see that we're saving it and copying it over. And this is so that way, if it works correctly, Tommy can get this file, the one that we're saving right now, and he'll be able to run with this setup. And he'll be able to have his entire league with a feeder league system, which is so much more fun to play with than just the, oh, look, here's the players involved in the draft this year. Now you can actually watch them play, which is so cool. All right. And, of course, it has to save all of the messages and the text files and everything else. Let's see how long that's going to take. 62,000 files! Good night! Let me see if I can find that template while we're waiting for this. Hold on, NCAA. Because there is a mod for it. There's the 2018 NCAA rosters. There's an NCAA D1 quick start. All 352 Division I schools are represented in this game, including those without baseball programs in real life. So let me share this one. This is un uh, this is even available for OTP21. Boom. There you guys go. So that's the template that I had seen. This is a fully playable NCAA Division I baseball quick start. Um, it's meant to stand alone for those of us who love college baseball. It's not suitable as a feeder league as far as I'm aware at least. Oh, so he hasn't set it up as a feeder league. So this is more like you play as just college. Oh. Okay. Huh. 60 game schedules, 42 games within the conference, 18 games out of conference against other teams from their geographical uh, regions. Da, 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 da. There's a draft every single off season. Our code to award top draft picks and successful programs. Okay, that sounds about right. But uh, those are the teams, if you guys wanted to try that out. Yeah, that's a cool one right there. Oh, I would never have that involved in, you know, a, a league that you're trying to build on your own. That's, um, that is a standalone quick start. That is something that you, if you love college baseball in particular, play that. That would be great. Now, you could try to edit that quick start. Um, you could load it up, make a template of it, and then as long as you tweak it so it's all college, you could technically, you could technically use that in your save, um, but that is a massive league. That would be a massive feeder system. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if that would work that well outside of it being a college system, so yeah. Okay, it is still copying those files for me, as you can see. It's saying it's got about 10 minutes, so let me see if we can navigate around this league, make sure stuff is going well while that works in the background. So everything is good to go. Players are all set. So you can see the, um, the sabermetric player creation modifiers are going to be set in stone already, depending upon what you're looking for in terms of high school and college players. There is, of course, the age groups already assigned. So this is stuff that you would have to change on your own if you didn't make the if you didn't use the uh, the automated creation of these feeder systems. You would have to set up ages so the league would be restricted to only certain age groups, and it would only create certain age groups. That's all you'd have to do. You'd also have to set up the schedules and make sure that you know all, all the other stuff was being done correctly. Um, there's no financials for any of these college or high school systems. It's mostly just enabling the age groups um, that you'd have to make sure. Uh, you can change your draft eligibility, actually. If you wanted to start um, 
according to high school, college years, you know, all players are eligible two years prior to their max age. If the max age is reached or surpassed, you can change when the player is available to be drafted or eligible to be included in the draft. You can make those changes. You also have your feeder league system that feeds into the United Baseball League in this regard right now. It would feed into whatever you'd like to do for your own game. So if you do that for MLB, this would be, end up being Major League Baseball instead of the uh, United Baseball League instead. Fictional Independent League. Do you have two previous Fictional Independent Leagues on this game? Might have deleted two Fictional Independent Leagues that are still having signs of, uh, of life somehow in the system. But uh, that's okay. That shouldn't be a problem. But um, yeah, if you guys end up doing those feeder systems from scratch, uh, that's going to be a little bit different than... Um, than doing the, it the way that we did it in terms of it being automated. Uh, but I would highly recommend using the automated system because it sets up all of the settings and it, it micromanages a lot of the stuff uh, that you need to have set up correctly. So if you're you know having issues with setting up your own custom feeder system and it's not quite developing the players the way you want them to, they're coming in as like under, uh, they're not rated high enough, they're not good quality. It's probably your saver metrics. It might be the fact that they're, you know, custom games instead of ones that are automatically set up inside of the uh, of the game with the automated system. Okay, so here's the other question that, uh, that Sharpie was wanting to ask as well. Can you set up independent clubs in an affiliate league where those players can be signed to affiliate clubs if they have injuries? Uh, let me see. Can you set up independent clubs... In an affiliate league. Regretfully, the problem with that Sharpie is that if you have um if you have non-affiliated clubs, which you can do in a rookie system or even in a double A system or triple A system, you can add teams to any of your minor league systems and have them be unaffiliated. The problem is that means that they're not they're not tied to any organization but they still have the rights to that player for the contract duration that they sign them to. Um, so the problem is that they wouldn't be able to leave that non-affiliated or independent club until the end of their contract. Um, they could be traded for, but they won't be able to be like grabbed from those independent clubs at a moment's notice. They don't they're not just free to leave. That's not like as if they're on like, you know, like a 30-day contract like the ML like the NBA does for uh, for their minor league systems unfortunately. Um let me see. You want to have teams in a minor league not be affiliated to any organization so the players playing those teams could be either bought or traded by other, for by the teams. Um community doable since we add more teams. Yeah, like I just said, you can add more teams and have them not be affiliated. And your finances. Yeah, if you don't have... Uh... Technically, there's no finances in minor leagues. That's actually incorrect. I, I, I misstated that. There are no finances in the minor league systems. Um, but, again, anybody, any team that grabs a player... Here, I'll put this actually on the screen so people can see what we're waiting on. Waiting on that guy right there. So a minute left. Um, whenever someone signs to an organization, they have full rights to that player. That's the problem. Is that it, it's not like as if you know they can go to a team to play for a couple weeks, and if they you know come off injury and they're doing well, then they suddenly go join a major league squad because you know they were a free agent or because of something else. Most of the time, um, the way you're going to do that is you're going to kind of do it the way that uh, Tommy's done it, done it here actually. I was just waiting for it to save really fast, so that way we uh, had a backup of where we're at right now, because we're going to do some simulations and see if it works. So the way that uh, that Tommy's had it set up here is he has uh, a last chance league, and this last chance league allows players to come and play under contract, um, but then they can be purchased by other leagues for a hundred thousand dollars. So this is a perfect example of let's say somebody from the free agency decides they just can't wait to play baseball right now. They're going to play baseball. So they're going to sign with a, you know, independent league. But then technically any major league team could buy them 
for a hundred thousand dollars, uh, and the minimum minimum buyout amount would be ten percent. You know, you can do you can set 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 this up to allow teams to then look through the independent leagues and buy the players off of them if the player is doing well enough. So that's the best way to set that up is to do it like this. But unfortunately, you can't do that in like the minors um, of your major league teams because those are direct correlations to organizations versus an independent league which has no affiliation to the major leagues and therefore you can buy them from the league instead of buying them while they're already in the league, if that makes sense. Um, it wouldn't be possible to put those in a minor league system, but you could technically consider your independent league to be like you're the lowest tier. So I'm seeing that you're saying, you know, you've got like A, B, C, D, and E. The E league is, you know, you've got some stuff set up, and then you have, yeah, you've got F and G for your rookie systems. So you would have like H at that point, and H would be, a catch-all league, which is basically what this last chance league is here for, for Tommy. It's a catch-all league. So anybody who doesn't go into any of those minor leagues goes here to play. And if they do well enough here, then a team will grab them and pay the independent league teams to buy the player off of them. And um, then that player gets to be placed probably into a minor league system, probably double A. Um, exactly. If you have lots of free agents who aren't developing... This is the best way to be able to do that because if you have too many draft pool players, if we actually have too many feeders, um, they end up stacking up into the free agency, which is what uh, we kind of discovered was happening as well. Um, that kind of was happening for his major league system. He's got 1,962 players in Tommy's free agency right now. Now, I'm hoping that most of those players will end up signing with a uh, – with a minor league squad or with a major league squad. So that number will probably go down over the course of the next month, which is actually exactly what we're going to test right now. We're going to simulate all the way up into the player draft pool. I want to see if the player draft pool expands to, uh, to a number that we're happy with or if it's already at the number we're happy with. It's already at 1,400 players, so I think we're going to do just fine. I think we're going to be just fine. Um, 600, 600, 300. So, yeah, because we calculated we only needed about 840 players involved in the draft to be able to have a full draft. So there shouldn't be anybody else created uh, since the draft pool is already full. So let's go ahead and do some simulations. I want to monitor the uh, free agency and the independent league, make sure that everybody's doing a good job, and then we'll see what happens when we get to a draft. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to one of these teams really fast. I want to see their rosters, 40 of 40, reserve of 34. That's good enough for me. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to Major League. I want to go all the way up until the draft pool announcement. Oh, whoops. I forgot about that. I'm still actually operating as somebody. I need to go on to do not do, do not disturb me, please. Don't bother me. All right. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll go all the way up to the draft pool announcement. And we'll see. Um, so we do know that there are some minor leagues in the system that don't have enough players. But that's okay because we actually don't really mind that. We don't actually mind that that much. So as you can see, players are starting to play high school games. So as they play high school games, they're going to start giving us more and more results. And you're also going to notice there's nobody, there shouldn't be anybody at least, who has those pre-made statistics anymore. Nobody on the list has pre-made statistics. Everybody is custom. All of these kids are going to have years of time, or at least some of them will. Some of them are going to be a little bit shorter time frame because they are, they're already 22 or they're already pretty old. But some of these kids, you know, 18-year-old out of high school, that's pretty good. But some of the people in this draft who are destined for like 20, 35, we're going to end up seeing multiple years of statistics out of Ryan Seals. He's going to get two years of stats for us to be able to review of our scouting director and be able to say, well, you say he's 106 contact. He's batting 444, but if he bats 250 next year, 
maybe he's not 106 contact. You know, maybe he isn't exactly as high as we think he is because we have statistics to back us up on this now. So not not only do we, you know, so no longer do we have to worry about, oh, we only have the one generated year of statistics to go off of and then the ratings. How do we know this is accurate? You know, our scout says it's accurate, but um, can we trust our scout? Can we trust the system? Like, there's a little bit of guessing game involved when you don't have an actual legitimate feeder system in your league. But when you have a feeder system, so we'll go ahead and simulate up until the first year draft. CPS, oh, there's a championship. There's some kind of a tournament about to begin, I believe. Uh, this is the, no, CPS? What is this? What is this? Hold on. So there was an expansion. Oh. Draft pool. First year player draft. Oh, is it a different league doing something? Hold on. Some other league is doing something. I don't know what. Hopefully, uh, World Baseball Classic. Ah, ha, ha. Okay. Now, is that an association or is that a... Uh... Oh, I see. Okay. So CPS is the um, American Pride Series. Okay. Let's say CPS. What is C? C. Okay. You're going to have to run by me what C means. Shouldn't it be the APS? Oh. What? Yeah, American Pride. Shouldn't it be APS then? <laughs> which is the which is the power company that's here in Arizona. Uh, Arizona Powering Systems. Because uh, it would be the EPS, right? For the European one? Yeah, EPS. Country Pride. <laughs> well, then why do you... <laughs> oh, good grief. You should change it to the AP. I was so confused. Like, CPS? He doesn't have, like, a... He doesn't have, like, any kind of a league that has C at the beginning of their name, though. Okay, so up to the first-year player draft. That's fine. That That's fine. That's fine. Good grief. It used to be just every country. Oh, okay, okay. So you um you Brexited off Europe. Okay, anyhow. Um, so we'll go ahead and go up until the uh, first year player draft, <clears throat> and we'll uh we'll look at some of the statistics for the players involved, and then we'll go all the way until next year's draft, because I believe we're just doing. Is this just spring training right now, I believe, still? I believe it's just spring training right now. Ah, uh, further question here from Sharpie. Let me see. Can you set up an independent league at AAA for all players who have six years or more experience? Um, short season A ball for players with four to five years of experience. I mean, you can do, um, I know you can do restrictions on who's allowed inside of different leagues, um, but the issue comes down to, again, you would, um, it would be, it would be much better for you to basically just make a large independent league that is a catch-all, if you could, um, to be able to grab everybody that's, um, that's not going to be allowed to play in the minors anymore because there's not enough room. If you're having an overflow of players, you may need to um, you may need to reduce the amount of rounds in your draft or increase the size of the rosters for your minors. Oh, there's our first. Wait, too many players. Wait, what? Which team are we active for? Omaha. Oh, okay. So the rosters are not... Whoa! Oh, because they have... Uh, da -da 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 -da. Spring training ended. I'm guessing that Kansas City also needs to have their thing done as well. <clears throat> uh, okay, hold on. Oh, you have them all controlled by you. Hehehe. 
Yeah, that might be why. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Much better. Did they change the bug where you couldn't set a custom filter how you want to view your stats? Uh, are you talking about in terms of changing a filter? Yeah, let me know, Dote, uh, if, it's, if that's the question you're asking about in terms of the filters, or is that in terms of the views? Because I don't think the views have been fixed yet. I don't know why I'm still having problems with the views. At least I think it's the views I'm having problems with. Yeah, I still can't save custom views somehow. I have to double check with Matt on that. Um, in terms of being able to save the, save the filters? Oh, for views. Yeah, I don't know why I can't save, save my views right now. I, I need to get in touch with Matt again, because I know that he's still trying to, um, to work with me on that, to figure out what's, what's happening on that end. Because I'm guessing that's probably something that they're aware of, and they're still working on that as well. Because, yeah, that's kind of an important little, that's kind of an important little view thing. So, um... Are they aware of custom views? Um, you can do the custom views, but again, the problem is that they're not saving, for me at least. So I don't know if other people are are okay with, are having no problem with that or not. Um, I haven't heard a lot of people having that problem, so I was wondering if it was just me. But um, yeah, I'm still waiting to see if Matt can uh, get back to me on that and figure out what's going wrong. Because I'm pretty sure that's a... Uh, that's a bug thing. Yeah, because I do a whole bunch of custom views, too. I do, like, uh, I do draft views. I do um, coach views. And I do, um, like, release, pending release views is what I like to do. I like to have different views that give me different info about certain things. Um, oh, I also love to always have a view to know who is my troublemakers for chemistry, team chemistry, personality, stuff like that. I always try to have a view that is just for that. So I always have something that I can turn to to instantly look at and go, ah, here's my troublemaker. Get rid of you. <laughs> Trade the person, release the person, whatever you want to do. Awesome, Sharpie. Glad that helped out a little bit. Uh, if you have more questions about that, let me know, because you can do a whole bunch of customization for your minor leagues and your independent leagues. That's very easy to be able to do, but they can get a little bit complicated. So if you've got any questions at all about that and you want to delve into that further, let me know, because um, the structure of your minors won't be as bad, um, but you want to make sure that, yeah, for all your free agents that are just being thrown into the free agency pool, you want to make sure that they can go someplace. That's that's always the biggest struggle with a custom league especially, is making sure that you don't, you know, simulate four years into your game and then go to your free agency tab and there's like 4,000 people just sitting there and it's like, oh gosh, I need to, um, I need to wipe some players out. Um, which technically, you know, they should be retiring after a couple of years. Um, but sometimes they don't. Sometimes the players stick around, you know. Like Bobby Vanilla. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Not Bobby Vanilla. Other people, though, definitely do stick around. Okay, so we're simulating up until the first-year player draft. I want to show off what the um, what the uh, stats can look like for a first-year player draft when you have feeder systems involved, which is very cool. And then we are getting close to the two-hour mark, so we might be um, we might be getting close to ending here pretty soon, guys. But it has been a good stream. I think we've answered a lot of questions. We've had a lot of topics about the feeder systems. Illegal number of players. Okay, so now we're going to run into our problems with the uh, players not being signed fast enough for the minors. So this is something that can happen as well. You'll notice that we don't have enough players in the minor system. So... If you run into a problem like this where you have a lack of minor league players, there's just they haven't signed enough people, which is kind of silly because there's still literally, well, there's only 872 players left. No, wait, that's pitchers. There's now 2,404 players. So the fact alone that no one could sign these players is a little silly. However, there's no way to just, you know, assign them to teams, unfortunately. So... Regretfully, the best way to do this is actually to go in and wipe a bunch of them off of your league system. 
Um, the best way that I would handle that is I would go to custom view, uh, custom uh, filter. If there potential, 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 there it is. I need potential rating is less than one star. I would end up just going into here and I would just be like, you know what? You guys are decent, but there's 1,200 of you. And I'm just going to delete you all. And I would just get rid of them all at that point. Um, you might have to do this occasionally if, you're, if your custom league is making too many players. You may have to go in and delete some players just to kind of reset the league. Um, just so that way they don't become, you know, overflowing in your league. Because as these players are generated, they take up more and more memory and storage space. So if you've got thousands of players in your free agency tab, that's a whole bunch of memory. The game has to load at any given time. Because there's someone that you might access. So a quick little tip for people how to speed up your speed up, to speed up your game: delete a bunch of players. Absolutely do that. Will there be any simulations done due to delay in baseball? Um, oh, there are tons of people doing simulations in OTP. I know Baseball Reference is doing it. Athletic, the Athletic is doing it right now. Um, there's a ton of people who are using OTP. Uh, to be able to simulate what real 100, well, what would have been a 2020 season. Um, depending upon what they decide to do for this year, I don't know if we're going to make changes to match that. Um, I'm not the person to ask about that, regretfully. Uh, that would be a Marcus question. Um, yeah, I do a coal filter for half-star players. Uh, <laughs> Yep, that's kind of what you have to do. If you if your league is getting too big, you just got to do a quick little purge of all the bad players. Um, oh, gosh, yeah. Sharpie uh, in my uh, Discord link says he has 2,223 free agents. Yeah, that would do it. Yep, yep, that would do it. And I'm guessing most of those players are probably half-star and one-star potential players. So if you can get rid of even half of those... Oh, gosh, your game will run a little bit faster. Stuff is going to go a little bit smoother. And you're going to be happier because that takes out all of the, you know, really bad quality players. So, yeah, it just helps. So we have to get past this error, though, which is that there's an illegal number of players on the active roster for certain organizations, and that's mostly the rookie system. So we have to go in to game settings, league settings, go right down to the warm weather league, and we're going to fill the team with fictional players. Boom. And then I'm also going to do that for the other rookie system, just so that way they're both filled. Since we deleted a bunch of players, I'm going to make sure everybody's good to go. And that should be just fine. Boom. Done. All right. Now we should be good to go, right? Yeah. There we go. All right. So now we're good to go again. So I'll go right back to this, and you will notice that the rosters are now all full, 38 and 33. So it's not going to make anybody really that good, unfortunately. Um, or maybe fortunately, I don't know. But anywho, uh, we can go ahead and keep going to the first-year player draft now. Oh, I wanted to check on the high school systems. Hold on, hold on. I wanted to check on college, high school, and junior college, because as you can see, they're playing games. Yeah! Yeah! They're totally playing games at this point. So you could go in and you could be like, all right, Fort Lauderdale, how did you do this season? Look at that. They had a 680 winning percentage. They were the best team in their division by far. And mostly because they have people like Kevin Wilson and Brent Sprang. And Kevin Wilson had a phenomenal season, a 31 homer season with a 372 batting average, 3.4 war. Um, he's due for the 20... 34 college draft uh, or amateur draft sorry so he'll be probably going in the first round I'm assuming so if you go back to baseball back to the rookie draft and go to the mock draft Kevin Wilson is considered to be the number two overall pick sorry if that doesn't make you just really really happy that you can literally go to their page see them play see their results directly in the game oh there's just something about that where it's like, wow, it's an actual real player. I can watch them play. They played the entire season. Uh, I could go and watch them perform at any time. This guy had a rotator cuff strain. He'll miss five weeks 
that's not good. So maybe Tyler Brown, maybe you don't go for him because he just had an injury he just came off of. So he only had six games started and he didn't do that well. So do you think about maybe going with Kevin Wilson as number one, number one overall pick instead of, uh, instead of Tyler Brown? I mean, there's just so much more involvement when you actually have a legitimate feeder system involved developing your players. And you've got good people all the way. I mean, you could even say that Mike Burton's not that bad as a uh, you know a third round pick. That's not bad. I'd take that a third round. Let's check the uh, let's check the seventh round. Or sorry, it only goes to the five, fifth round, I believe. Unless I'm wrong about that. Let me see. I think it only does up to a certain point in the uh, mock draft, I believe. But uh, ah, that guy's got good fielding, not very good hitting. But yeah, it's just it adds such a depth of realism to your game when you have a legitimate feeder system involved. So let's go ahead and go all the way up to the first year player draft, and we're going to see who gets drafted number one overall. Is it going to be Kevin, or is it going to be that starting pitcher guy we saw? Who is going to take the number one overall pick this year? Who is Houston going to grab? Because I'm pretty sure the Colts are the number one pick this year. I'm going to go ahead and let that go through real fast. <laughs> Cheer for the underdog. I mean, sure, I'm all I'm all for, you know, the um the the Augie Ojeda's of 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 the game. But at the same time when there are 2000 Augie Ojeda's trying to play, there's too many. There's <laughs> just just too many. Omaha is going to draft the left fielder. Uh, Omaha has... Uh, I don't think Omaha has the number one pick, though. <laughs> I I would take Kevin number one overall. The injury to that other pitcher would completely throw me off. I would I would not be touching that other pitcher at all with a, with a shoulder strain like that. No, no. I, I wouldn't even be going for him. Okay, game. What are we looking at now? Let me see if I can answer any more questions here. Was there anything else that I needed to talk about? My team, Detroit Tigers and Yankees, Blue Jays, Phillies, Pirates, will be in the new Grapefruit League. Are they actually going through with that? Are they actually legitimately going to do that? Because I thought that was just like, oh, maybe we'll just, you know, maybe we'll do a radical realignment uh, of the entire thing. Like, um, I didn't think that was legit yet. Like, did they actually say that's going to happen or is that just something they're talking about doing because i mean to an extent i don't i don't mind that especially since if they're going to do i mean you don't want to have everybody in the same um you can't have everybody in the same city that that's that's not going to happen you're not going to have everybody in phoenix or everybody in you know florida that's just that's just not going to happen um but to an extent, I, I don't know what um, I don't know what they're gonna do. I, I really don't. I think they're still considering it, and I think that there's a lot of people who are gonna completely rebuff. Um, well, that's what they want to do. That's what they want to do, but I don't think that the owners. And I don't know if the players are going to agree to that. So I think that's what MLB is throwing out there, trying to see if it, you know, garnishes um, uh, enough support. Um, we'll see about that. And yeah, Baltimore is... Um, yeah, yeah, Baltimore is definitely getting the number one draft pick next year. So anywho, first-year player draft. Awesome. So I just want to make sure that everything is set up correctly, that everything's good to go. So I don't think Omaha... Uh, you don't even have a first-round pick, dude. I don't think Omaha is getting anything good. And again, I would not be picking up Tyler Brown. I would not be picking up Tyler Brown right now. I'd pick up Kevin Wilson. That would be my choice. I'd pick up Kevin Wilson instead. Uh, Brown has not started. Um, I don't think he's played since his injury. Ugh. It's because of old compensation? Ah, okay, that's why. That's why. 
So anywho, let's go back real fast. So college is going to actually have their own playoff system too. So you could watch the playoffs. You can see that the Steelheads beat the uh, North Las Vegas College Jazz team. And um, we may also notice that the uh, the one organization we were thinking to be one of the best in the league, which I believe was, who was that? That wasn't the Steelheads, was it? No, we liked Fort Lauderdale. We liked the werewolves. Did the werewolves get far in the playoffs? The werewolves got beat out by Santa Clarita. Oh my gosh. Santa Clarita wasn't even a first pick person. Good grief. But they had a good squad and they did a good job. So you know what? Oh man, someone tore their labor. I saw the last second there. Anywho, but then the Jazz ended up going all the way but lost to Medford. Of course, it's Medford. <laughs> Why would it not be Medford? Anywho. So, yeah, they've got some good players, too. Looks like they've got mostly... Let's see, they got a couple interesting pitching prospect people, it looks like. But overall, just a much better team in terms of, like, a good leadoff hitter, it looks like. It's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. So, your college leaders... I mean, Miguel... Miguel Guido has got a lot of power. Jared Herrera's got a lot of power. Uh, I know that we had somebody with 31 on this side. I think that was, um, yeah, Kevin Wilson had 31 homers. He batted 372. Uh, Ryan Seals. Okay, so this is a kid that's supposed to be out for next season. He had a 479 batting average by the end of the season. Wow, this kid's good. This kid's really good. So if anything, you want to make sure you get this kid next year. So make sure that from the 2035 draft, you're number one overall pick because you want this kid. You really want this kid. Unfortunately, he's not actually available this year. He is next year's draft player. So we'll be able to see another whole entire season of Ryan Seals playing high school ball. Or is this college? College ball, sorry. Uh, before he actually makes it to the uh, to the draft system. So we'll have two, two years of simulating for him. Otherwise, for high school, looks like... Uh, got a couple people who are pretty good. Sonny Scurry's not bad. He's not available until 2037. So you've got three years of Sonny Scurry to look at before he'll be involved in a draft. So you've got great chances to be able to get a good good read on this kid and he might even be able to develop that uh that playing position unless he's been playing dh no he's been playing L uh, he's been playing left field well i'm sorry he's been trying to play left field he's playing it very poorly <laughs> let's just say that much um at least this guy's been playing right field decently he's 16 right now on the left field ability but oh my gosh, is he terrible. Yeah. Yeah, some of these guys not so good. Uh, so any good pitchers we're going to look at? Norm? Norm's not bad if he can get that third pitch up there, but he's fragile already. He had a mild abdominal strain. Didn't miss any time, though. Was a part of the All-Star game and was the pitcher of the year for the system at this point, for high school at that point. Does everybody from college and high school league enter the draft at some point or no? Yes, everyone will enter the draft at some point. You can change when that happens by going to the rules. So right now we have it uh, for the high school and college years criteria, that is. Um, for this, this is a uh, high school league we're looking at right now. Players are eligible to be, 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 yeah, excuse me. Players are eligible to be drafted in their senior year after which they will move to a college or junior college if they're not drafted. So you could even see someone go from high school, three or four years of high school, into college or junior college, have a couple more years in junior college or college, and then finally get drafted. You could even have somebody really good out of high school who doesn't want to get drafted, wants to commit to their college years, commits to their college year, has a couple more years of college, and then becomes a first-round pick kind of player. So you could see some really cool stuff when you do these feeder systems with, like, years and years of development. Oh, yeah, a lot of people who go from high school go straight to the pros. A lot of them are just drafted straight into the pro system. Not so much the MLB system, 
but straight into the minor system. You know, that's that's what happens to a lot of these players. But you can change when you would like players to be eligible for the draft, if you want them to be eligible a year prior to their maximum age, which is, for this point, it's seniors, you could have it be every single player is eligible every single year. So that would be kind of more like college basketball at that point, where it's like, hey, yeah, you want to commit? You just commit, all right? You just go and you commit to it, all right? But um, right now, let's go ahead and find out who gets the first overall draft pick, shall we? So our money... Well, at least not my, not my money, but our bet is that it's going to be between Kevin Wilson and Tyler Brown, and my money is on Kevin Wilson. I think he's the better person to grab. I think that uh, Houston definitely should be picking up uh, Kevin Wilson unless they really feel like as if that starting pitcher, Brown, is going to be just the best pitcher they could possibly get. He does have six pitches. So that's not bad. I do love the six pitches profile of Tyler Brown. He's a college freshman at the age of 19, um, straight out of uh, Detroit's college system. And um, let's find out, guys. Let's find out who gets drafted overall number one. All right. Houston will select the number one overall draft. Tyler Brown. All right. So they will pick the number one starting pitcher on the draft, which means that Los Angeles will probably pick up... No, they don't pick Kevin. They picked David. Why would you pick David? Why would you... Okay, I guess that's pretty good. 435 batting average, a 27 homer season, 16 doubles. Um, he's not bad. 3.3 war. That's, that's, that's pretty good. He's very easy to sign. That's for Omaha, though. Um, he's durable as well. And, of course, that means Washington, you got to be picking Kevin Wilson now. I mean, you're not going to go for Khalil Rowe, are you? They go for Kevin Wilson. All right. So Fort Lauderdale, uh, College Werewolves, and their Kevin Wilson end up going to... Oh, gosh, I can't even remember who it was now. They go to the Washington Senators. All right. So Kevin Wilson goes there. So let's go ahead and go all the way. Let me see. I want to go... I really want to go all the way until the next season, if I can. Let's see how fast we can do this. If not, then I'll just leave it alone for right now, and that'll be just fine. But, um... Ooh, actually, I should double-check and make sure that the draft went smoothly. Hold on one second. Go back to MLB. Go to the rookie draft. Draft history. 725 players got drafted. Okay, that's not actually the draft view, but okay, sure. Hold on a second. There we go. So the, uh, let's see, they had rounds. There we go. So they did do their 30 full rounds. So they had 725 draft picks, which means that Kevin Brennan was the last pick of the year. He is a uh, starting shortstop. Yeah, starting shortstop out of... Uh, from technically St. Paul High School. So he was a high school shortstop who got drafted to his organization. We'll see if he... Actually, he already has been signed. Awesome. He signed a minor league contract with the New Orleans Voodoo. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, there we go. He got drafted in the uh, 30th round, pick number 24, 725 overall pick. And then, of course, as players go away from teams, as they get drafted... Um, these players will be auto-generated back... Well, the, the, the missing slots will be auto-generated back to the teams. So Cleveland will get players to fill their reserve roster um, and some of their major league rosters. And teams that lost a lot of players, these will get filled back up. Uh, when they hit preseason, the game will generate new players. And those will be the players that then end up becoming part of either a year or two down the road, that draft, or anytime in the next three to four years. So that's how it works, guys. That's basically it. We have had two hours of us discussing the feeder league system, which was about 30 minutes longer than I expected to have. But that was good. That's, that's This is basically your full-on beginner's course for feeder league systems, kind of what you're looking to do, um, and a little bit of hints of how to set it up and make sure that it runs correctly. But um, as long as you do the automated system, that is by far the best way to have all the hard work done for you. And you can even start to see franchises in the college system if you wanted to. You can become attached to some of these college teams and be able to see what they do over the course of the you know, couple of years that you can simulate. 
And as always, the uh, the draft the draft pool updates. So anything that happens in the college system, new players get added. You can see uh, for future draft picks, we now we're gonna have more and more players added to each draft pool every single year as you go further along. And of course, as always, um, the high school kids who don't get drafted or don't get signed, you can move into the next season and they will go to a college team if there's a slot available. So as long as that happens, you'll be just fine. They'll be able to slot straight into a college system and they'll go for a future round down the future draft down the road. And that's it. That's how that works, guys. Um, I hope you guys have if you, guys, if you sorry, try it again. If you have any questions at all about the college feeder system, the high school feeder system, um, you can always DM me on Discord. My name is Hazy Axel or Alex Murray uh, or Alex Support Team, I think is what I'm technically called. Alex slash support team on the Discord. I'm in the upper right-hand corner uh, of our Discord. Um, you can also find me on Twitter. I'm at AZ Axel. Um, that's, my, uh, that's my gamer tag for almost any place that I play, unless it's Riot Games, which I can't do it in Riot Games somehow. Um, but if you guys have any questions, you can also DM me directly here on Twitch as well. Again, AZ Axel. And, um, yeah, I hope you guys had a lot of experience, or not a lot of experience, a lot of, tr of uh, fun learning how to be able to do feeder systems, how to make them, how to be able to, you know, just observe them and watch players play multiple years because there's going to be a lot of cool stuff you can see from these feeder systems. Um, in terms of how is my rubber team looking, my perfect team, let me see if I can actually do that really fast. Let's do one last thing. We'll do one last thing because this, this league is good to go. Tommy, or uh, <laughs> in, in this case, bet righty throw lefty. I will send you the files for this league with the feeder system attached to this whole entire thing, and you'll be able to go and play with that. Please draft that one outfielder in the next year. Like, it, whatever you can, get the first overall pick for next year because that outfielder, that kid's going to be special. Get him. Get him. All right. So we'll go ahead and save that, close out of that, and then I will double-check my perfect team and show you guys how badly my silver team is doing at this point, and then we'll end the stream. All right. So we're saving that real fast. Yeah, Ryan Seals. That was the guy. Okay. So technically, it's the Rockies team from last year, but I'm not doing the... Uh, I'm not doing that this year. I'm not doing the theme team this year. So unfortunately, I named it that without realizing that that's what I was going to do. All right, so let's see how badly I'm doing, guys. One last thing before we close out the evening. Let's see how badly we're losing this time. All right, we lost to Edmonton. Ah, me and Snaggle have both been eliminated. I have lost 102 games. <laughs> oh, please help me. <laughs> um, and the worst part is the team's not bad. Like, I don't have a bad squad. Like, sure, I've got a couple of golds I could be replacing, but, man, guys, silver's tough. Like, silver is really tough, guys. Multiple teams with 100 losses. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six teams with 100 losses or more, of which I'm actually, like, I think I'm still fourth. I think I'm still... I think I'm still... No, I'm not. Yes! <laughs> I am half a game ahead of the Lincoln Lightnings now officially. I will not be relegated if it ended right now. So I'm actually doing good enough. <laughs> oh my gosh. This, this league is so bad. It's just so bad. We are probably going to have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm assuming there's enough games left to probably have seven. One hundred. Yeah, there's definitely enough games left for seven. All right. There are going to be seven 100 game-winning teams in this league, guys. This is ridiculous. Ridiculous. I mean, we're probably going to have... I'm certain that Snaggled... Okay, okay. Guys. Since Snaggle's not here, since Chris is not here, can we win some of these games? If I can win enough games against Snaggle, against Chris, 
we can not only make him a 100 loss team, we might be able, might, and I say with a big, big might, we might be able to make fourth place over him, maybe, depending upon how we do. I had a really good July. I have not had a good, I did not have a good May at all. I did not have a good May at all. That was terrible. No one, everybody who was really good was thrown against me. Like, everybody was. But, I did beat Snackle the last time I saw him. I think. I tied him right there, and then I'm pretty sure I beat him. Yeah, I almost swept him in a four-game series back in June. So there is a chance. There's a chance that if I beat him enough in these six games, six, uh, three at home, three away, there's a chance that I might be able to sneak by him. Maybe. I, I, I highly doubt it. I highly, highly doubt it. But maybe. I'll keep my fingers crossed. I'll let you guys know what happens. All right. That's it for the evening, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here for Science Saturdays. I hope you guys had a lot of fun discovering those feeder systems and um, how they work and what you can do about that. Please be praying for my team, <laughs> for my perfect team. There are a lot of discorders in here. Um, oh, yeah, you've got uh, you got Magus in here. Tommy Fam is in here. Across the way, you've got Fabtron. Um, I know that Springfield was really good last year. That's CCDM. Uh, there's a lot of good Sharp K is here as well, which I don't even know if that's, if that's Sharpie or not. Um, there's a lot of good teams in this division. So, yeah, be praying for this team. Please pray that I don't get relegated back down to uh, to bronze. But uh, hoping that I can just outlast the uh, the tanks and the and the whales, and then I'll be good to go. Anywho, I'm out, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. I'll try to get this video up on YouTube. Uh, I might have to do some editing on it real fast just to cut out some parts. But uh, hope you guys had a fun time. That is sharp. Okay, I thought that was sharp. He's a good another good player right there. Another great player right there. Anywho, I'm out, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your afternoons. And I will see you guys hopefully next Saturday for more science. All right. Take care.